All right, welcome back. We continue Steelers and the preseason 3 and 0. Now I'll look ahead to the Cincinnati Bengals week 1, followed by New England and then Cleveland, two of the first 3 in the division, so it's an important thing to start well. I want to talk to you guys about who played today. Andrew, I couldn't believe, you know, I understood the logic of to get guys some some action. But even if you agree with that, the fact that you saw starters in there for the first half after they played a lot of them last week in Jacksonville made me really scratch my head. And then to see two injuries, albeit not serious, it looks like. Well, in two very specific cases, Tomlin blew it today and was lucky to avoid catastrophe. T.J. Watt and Najee Harris. Najee Harris came out after the game and said, I had a Liz Frank injury in camp. That's why I wasn't practicing. It's a six-week injury. He's in week four. You're playing him at less than 100% in an exhibition game. For the whole Ridiculously half. dumb. <laughs> T.J. Watt, Tomlin after the game says, we have a boxing match on September 11th. We need to spar. Well, last year, after the Buffalo game, he said, T.J. Watt is such a special player, he doesn't need training camp or the preseason. So, Mike, which one is it? I mean, he can't keep his story straight on these guys. And with Watt with that cut block, their season almost went down the drain. It was circling around the drain for about 20 minutes today, Josh. The hypocrisy is maddening, what you just said. I agree with you. Why is Cam Hayward playing an entire half of preseason football when it's 92 degrees outside against the Detroit? And he got dinged up at the end of camp, too. too. He and he did. doesn't need and, to do and it. he's dealing with an injury. He and T.J. Watt don't need to play preseason. Neither does Najee. If you want to get Najee a couple of series, which I thought we would see, fine. He's in there taking hits at the end of the first half. Yeah. Uh, Mike right. Tomlin is lucky that those injuries weren't serious. And especially with Najee, to me, you don't have a whole lot behind him. Let's be honest. And it's, well, I was going to mention, you're still trying to figure out who that running back number two right. is. There's Jalen Warren. There's Anthony McFarland Jr. There's Benny Snell, who hasn't acquitted himself totally well during the preseason. And then on the other side, it's rapidly becoming an issue your outside linebacker position, guys, because Alex Highsmith missed yet again today. Again, yes. And so you've got three other guys battling for that spot to play on the other side from T.J. Watt. What if T.J. Watt had gone down and we were talking about, I don't know, Delonte Scott and uh, I don't Hamilcar know, Derek, Rashad yeah, or whatever Derek his name Tuska is. starting next week. Why I did mean, they cut Avery? I, don't I mean, know. that is Avery still one of the most mystifying things. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I, and he got scooped up, by the way, if you've noticed, by Tampa Bay real quick. Yeah. And so he was having a pretty good camp, I thought for sure. And yes. he ends up going. All right, let's talk inside linebacker. Have you guys seen enough, Josh, of Devin Bush to make the conclusion he should be your starter? And if, if you say yes, it has to be because they don't have anyone else, although uh, I think they might. I, I, I would not start him, Bob. I, I, I have seen nothing from him. He had a half a tackle on, on a fourth down play, and I see everybody on Twitter. Oh, that was a great <laughs> Stop it. He's terrible. Uh, we're seeing tight ends push him 10 yards down the field. Very first play of the game, he got lost in coverage, gave up. It, it's too much. Uh, Robert Spillane is very, you know, athletically. Challenged. Ch thank you. That's the word. <laughs> You're welcome. He is. At least he hits people. At least he's physical. And he ta I, yeah. I, right. He's a good tackler. I know he's limited. I get that. I'd rather see him there. I know there are some other guys that we're intrigued by as well. Yeah, what Mark is, Robinson if, does a lot if, of the same stuff. If Devin right. Bush were not a former first-round pick, I don't even think he'd be on this team. No, I, he, I really he definitely wouldn't. It's the, it's the sunk cost at this point of yeah. basically spending three draft picks to acquire Devin right. Bush. And no, I, I, the reason we, we were all so excited, if you want to call it that, about that fourth down play is because how often have we seen we it from seen him it, since, right? he was a, since the first third of his rookie year? That's a play Derek, Devin Bush should make every single yeah. week, and he's never making it. So, no, he wouldn't be my starter. Robert Spillane and Mark Robinson would alternate there, especially in rushdowns. And then you're kind of left with maybe... I don't know how they dropped Terrell Edmonds down into the box now with it sounds like DeMonte KZ having a serious injury. Yeah, that's a problem. But, but yeah. that would have been the other option there to go dime more often. But we've seen them get exposed. We, I mean, worst run defense You know, you can understand if Devin Bush, he's a number one pick. They moved up 10th to get him. You can understand that they want to play him as many years as they can to get the max value or let him prove that he isn't worth it. Have we reached that point, Andrew, that he isn't worth it and he's only there because he is a number one pick versus somebody like a Mark Robinson who who's a seventh round pick, came in, played well. Just because he's a seventh round pick doesn't mean he needs to be well, considered. Well, I'm, I'm just sick, and I thought Flores was going to be a new sheriff in town. I'm, I'm frankly sick of the coddling that goes on with the guy, too. I mean, we got to hear about how he's making unsung plays and how great he is in the uh, film room. Stop it. I mean, the person that, that said he was worth trading up to the 10th pick for should be similarly, similarly fired for that decision. 
I mean, it's going to go down as one of the worst decisions in Steelers draft history. But because they what made they it, they keep putting uh, them out yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. You're right. You're just making yeah. it, you're exacerbating the situation when you do that. And, and they don't have a good set plan no. B. Mark Robinson's out there in the fourth quarter of this game with guys that are going to be working at Walmart in two <laughs> weeks. Mm -hmm. I mean, they did not play him. Part of this game that frustrated me is that in order to keep some of this old guard, Hayward, and guys out there who you know are great players, they didn't give more opportunities to guys that you wanted to see against right. first teamers. They waited too long on Pickett, and they didn't play Mark Robinson against good players in this game. I thought that was a coaching mistake. In the shame of the Devin Bush situation, I think the rest of this defense is pretty good. And it's very it clear what the week. I thought the defensive line looked really good today in the limited act with those three. Uh, they're Deep much, position right they're there. better there. Yep. The safeties really look good. Minka looks in midseason form. I thought Edmonds had a great camp. The whole defense looks pretty good. Then you go to 55. Who do you think the Bengals are going to be isolating on in two weeks if he's on the field? You know it's him. Tyler Boyd crossing pattern after Tyler mm -hmm. Boyd crossing <laughs> but pattern. But really, they don't have anyone to answer that, do they? No, that's Tight the problem. Back, it, especially the, now, like I said, with K, if KZ's hurt for any length of time. That's actually a low-key yeah. big injury yes, to come out of this yeah. game. Yeah. Yes, I mean, is. because now you've lost all your, your, ability, your flexibility with Terrell Edmonds. I kind of like Norwood. I mean, maybe maybe I'm Seventh delusional there, but a chance last I think year. he's a Swiss Army knife type yeah. player. He flashed at times for me last year, but I still think he's too small, especially if you want to use somebody down in the box. If you want to use Edmonds down there, fine. But I don't know if Norwood next to Fitzpatrick gives Minka the, the latitude to make plays that he needs to have. we got to make a break here. When we come back, we're going to talk about the backyard brawl. It's set for Thursday. So we've got two nationally televised games at Acrisure Stadium in five days. And then we'll talk about Aaron Donald. Should he be suspended for what he did in that joint practice? That's coming up right here on the number one Cochran Sports Show. The Sports Showdown is sponsored by GMC Sierra. 